Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is April 23rd of uh, 2019. This is going to be a, uh, I guess, a story video. I'm going to talk about some stories. I know there's one, I think, that popped. I've already forgotten it. I don't have a script. I never use a script. I should. Uh, if you happen to know, by the way, a good, of course, I could use Word or something else, if, of a good a good one that would work with, uh, of course, I have, what is it, uh, Notepad++, plus plus, which is good. But anyway, if you can think of something that would be good for a script that I could have running over, I have two monitors, so you're seeing this monitor, well, here, because that actually the camera is sitting on monitor two. So I have monitor one right now. I, well, I've put it in 10 back to my 4K monitor is back in 1080p. My other monitor, I've replaced the widescreen monitor with a 1080p uh, monitor. I have the control panel for my software that I'm running right now to record the desktop and the image is over here. Uh, I could actually drive it over so you, I can pull it over here so you can see what it looks like. Here's, uh, you know, what I'm using and it has the settings in it, but it's over here. So it's, so you're not seeing it and it's not distracting, but, um, so this is going to be a sort of a story video. I have uh, been reading, what is it, Quora? For, I don't know, a long time, years or what, I don't know how long they've been around, but I've been, and it's become addictive. And it's, you know, I'll go over and they have an awful lot of videos or questions. They have questions that people answer. And you get some really, you know, great questions. You get some stupid questions. Stupid. You get some really great questions and then you get some people who are really qualified and have expertise in an area and it's really interesting. An awful lot of the questions are for medical people like uh, what's the, you know, what's the worst thing you ever saw? What is the uh, saddest thing you ever saw in the emergency room? What is, you know, who's the worst doctor you ever, questions like, had a lot of those questions. There's an awful lot of questions, uh, military type questions, which is the best branch of service to go into. Have you ever seen somebody court martialed? Have you ever seen a high ranking officer? There's an awful lot of questions about, uh, you know, the uh, royalty in, you know, the queen or something. Uh, can she commit a crime and be arrested? Does she need a passport? And just a lot of questions. I think the first time, if I remember, it might have been something else. I think the first time that uh, I really noticed this was there was somebody, you know, I think before I was just, you know, pop up on my screen. and it, But somebody asked a question. I forget exactly what the question was, but it was something, you know, if somebody is really rich, really, really rich, do they actually have a, you know, do they actually have a gold card, you know, that's... Uh, really made out of gold or something and it was like also when they go into some place you know a nice restaurant or whatever do they have to take their card out and pay with their card like everybody else or just you know and two or three people answered who had worked for really really rich people and you know they talked about that uh, I've learned an awful lot from this. Uh, I intended to go into the military when I, I went to a military high school because I intended to go into the military when I got out of high school. In fact, I went as soon as I graduated from high school, I went down, tried to enlist. Um, I was rejected because I was 40 pounds under the minimum weight requirement. I didn't know they had a minimum weight requirement. I always thought the military built you up. And then uh, 
two or three years later, I was notified to go down for my selective service physical. I went, I've told this story before, so I won't go into that, but I went down, they, you know, along with 199 other guys, and uh, went home and, well, let me repeat it, let me say this part. There was 200 of us there, all naked, the doctor who, you know, the doctor out of 200, he came over to me and I was skin and bones. I looked like I could have got a part in a movie about concentration camps or whatever. And he came over to me and he said, have you been in the hospital? And I said, no. And he said, did, did you just get out? You have, what are you sick? And I said, no. Uh, then I saw him, you know, then that was it. He didn't go over to anybody else. Then it was just, we went through the, you know, the line or whatever. And then, I, of course, he was rejecting big husky guys because of bad knees and that type of stuff. So anyway, I went home and then I got a uh, notice that said I was 1A, you know. And so I went down to the uh, Army recruiter and he said, oh, yeah, he says, I get a list of everybody who's 1A, you know. And he said, you're on my list. I'd have been contacting you. And so I started feeling nice and I said something about you know I'm really pissed I want to make a career you know a career out of the military and I was down you know he says yeah you do look awful thin he says you know what's your height and weight and or I don't think you've even asked I think he just called over to the medical unit and uh, they said just a second and pull up my record and I guess they hadn't paid any I guess they probably didn't run in that very often you know they looked at my height they looked at 115 pounds or whatever it was, 115, 120 pounds or whatever it was. They said, oh, no, you know. So I got a card that was 1Y. So, you know, for years, well, and then reading this thing, questions here and everything, I learned that uh, I had a card all those years, well, you were required to carry your card. I don't know when they did away with that. You know, you, you could get into trouble if you didn't carry your card. Told whether you were 1A or 1Y or 4F. And I thought, if for 1Y, it was uh, suitable for military ser service only in national emergency. If you were a 4F, uh, it was like, get the fuck out of here. We don't want you. <laughs> you know, really, you know. And... Uh, but from reading, reading this, I found out, oh, well, at, well, the way I found out was somebody asked about Donald Trump and the fact that, you know, he had student deferments and then he had a medical deferment for a bone spur. Well, he really didn't have a bone spur. You know, it's come out that his father had a doctor or something that rented property from him and he asked the doctor to write a for Donald Trump, an excuse saying he had a bone for spur in his foot or something. But they mentioned that Donald Trump had a one Y, and I thought, oh. And then they mentioned that all the one Ys on a certain date were changed to four F, and I went, oh shit, I didn't know, you know. I mean, I mean, it doesn't really, it didn't really matter at that point. But I'd always thought, well, you know, I'm not four F, you know. But I was for it. It was changed to 4F. Um, but also, then, from asking questions here, from reading these uh, questions, I found out that now, apparently, from what some people who are in the military and what have you have said, and they were maybe some of these are recruiters that answer questions, stuff like that. Uh, Apparently, if you go in overweight, you know, of course, I'm sure they do still have limits. Maybe I would have still been. But if you go in and you are overweight, they get like put in a special unit or whatever, you know, of the maybe I don't know whether it be a platoon or a squad or whatever it is. You're in that unit. And so you are if you're overweight, you don't get much time in the, apparently to, you know, to eat normally I mean it's, it's rushed but you have to clean your plate all that type of all that kind of craziness but if you're overweight you get less time to eat you can't eat certain they you don't get certain foods 
and I forget what else. You know, so that group. So they're working on that group to get them through basic training. But if you're underweight, you get a few a few extra minutes to eat and you get, you know, the, some better or, you know, maybe, well, you get some food that will hopefully put some weight on you and whatever and that. So anyway, so now I guess if, if I, let, well, when telling my story, which was not, you know, telling my story, I'd probably have some people who were in the military or whatever would say, you know, uh, Jim's lying because I know that, uh, you know, skinny kids that were taken in, you know, or so forth and so forth. But anyway, you know, times change and things happen. But anyway, so I, what happens with this thing here is I start reading these things and I spend an hour or two reading and I think, my God, and I, and I, go, I keep going back. Um, and, you know, I think I'm wasting, I'm 78 years old or whatever. I'm wasting a lot of time, but it, uh, it's fascinating. Once, twice, maybe three times at the most, I've actually answered a question here. And I think that they had to do with uh, security, being a security officer. And, or maybe might have had to do with something having to do with a hospital. And I only, I've done it in years of watching this thing two or three times, maybe not even three times, because there's people a lot better qualified to, you know, to answer things like that than I am. Uh, there's an awful lot of, you know, repeat type questions. Um, but I just find it interesting watching the, or, uh, you know, these uh, questions. So I'm going to pull some, they're not going to show up here because I, you know, they're over here. But I'm going to pull up, I'm going to talk about a few things that I've seen here. Uh, questions. Because you guys haven't asked these questions, and why would you ask these questions? Um, one, it may not be a question, too. It may be that something just, just jogs my mind about something or other. Um, and there are some, yeah, there are some things that are popping into my head now. I am not going to mention any names. I'm not even going to mention the name of a hospital. Uh, and I, I want to mention these things, but I don't want any family, you know, I don't want any family or somebody that was to happen to, I hope they don't find this spot. And you may think, oh, Jim, you have less than 3000 subscribers. You don't have to worry. You know, it's not going to be on CNN or whatever. And it's probably true, but with, and I still have a blog, which nobody goes to, but since 1982, I've had a blog. And on that written blog, uh, I mentioned some things. And I, you know, um, somebody discovered it. Let me mention that. Uh, I mentioned, you know, we're talking about just a few years ago in my written blog, which nobody goes to anymore. Everybody goes to Facebook or to YouTube or something. Uh, I don't even know why I pay for the, you know, WordPress blog or whatever. And I've, I've spent money on it and I've bought extra add-ons and nobody goes there anymore. Used to. I'd get 3,000 views a day or, you know, that would drop down to 300. It depended on what the... Uh, I mentioned that uh, I had a girlfriend when I was in the second or third grade. And, uh, you know, I mentioned her name. And uh, I, I, I mentioned that when my mother bought me, it was Halloween and we were going to a party. I think it was a school party. I mean, I wasn't a school party. I think it was, you know, and that my mother came home from work with my costume for Halloween and it was 
a pirate costume with short pants, and I was positively humiliated that I had short pants, you know, short pants on. And I mentioned, too, I believe, in that, or maybe it was a different time, I mentioned that the only time I ever stole anything in my entire life was for this girlfriend, Carrie Benavia, uh, that the uh, other kids were doing some stealing. You know, we were in the second, third, or fourth grade, something like that. I could actually come back to an exact year because there was a big flood in Kansas City, well, in the Midwest, but a big flood in Kansas City. And uh, I remember that because uh, I had stolen some little suction cups that you stuck on the dashboard of your car and it told the temperature or something. And I ended up actually with a little box of 12 of them or something. And my parents, where did you get that? And I said, oh, well, it was flood damage and the store was giving them away. Oh, okay. But anyway, uh, at the same time or right after that, I stole a bracelet from either Sears or Montgomery Wards. Uh, and I gave it to Carrie. And then her mother called my mother and said, you know, Jimmy gave, you know, uh, is that okay? And then I was busted, you know. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't use the excuse, you know, of uh, well, flood damage, you know. But anyway, a few years ago, Carrie, uh, you know, who, you know, who grew up, who got married and her husband and her were retired and whatever, she found that blog entry. And she contacted me, and we talked on the phone a little bit. Find out. Six a.m. already. Yeah. Medication. Um, grab this again. Time to take my medicine. Here's your reminder. Medication. That's echo. Actually, I use the A word for it, though. So anyway, I. Uh, I did a video, or I mean, a, not a video, I did a, a blog entry. And I I saw in the, because I, I was checking the obituaries for, well, I stopped actually doing it. I'm afraid I'll find my name in there. In the Kansas City Star, that's where I spent my, you know, up to 2000 or whatever. Uh, and I saw that a man died who I, who used to be a, Kansas City, Missouri police officer, but he had retired and then he, <clears throat> well, I didn't know, I mean, I knew him, when he, I didn't know what his, but he had retired and then he was working as director of security at a bank or something. But anyway, I read it and then I, I uh, Eugene Segan was his name, and I did a blog post and said, you know, I'm really sorry to see that, uh, you know, Eugene had passed away, that I knew him back in the 1970s and he was uh forget the radio number now i think uh anyway kansas city missouri you know and he patrolled the district where st joe hospital was where i was a hospital security officer and then he also anyway i talked about you know he is you know i've been you know 30 years or whatever i worked you know, hospital security, and he was the best, you know, if you wanted a police officer, that was, you know, he was top-notch, A number one, uh, and everything, and talked a little bit about his, uh, the relationship that we, you know, the work relationship that he, we had, where he helped me out, and, and uh, uh, I mentioned one way. I worked at St. Joe Hospital, and we had 10 security officers that worked there. Uh, we had uh, the one security officer was shot in the parking lot and disabled, had to retire. Uh, less than a year later, John Gallegas was 
shot in the parking lot, and when he hit the ground, he was dead. But he managed, John managed to shoot the guy who shot him. Uh, but anyway, Eugene came, came by. I'm thinking it was 133. It was his car number, I believe. Anyway, um, he, you know, he came by and he said, oh, I'm Jim, I'm so sorry, you know, to hear about, you know, John and everything. I said, yeah, it's, you know, and uh, he said, if there's anything we can, you know, we can do. And I said, uh, no, they're taking care of everything in there now and getting things. And he, he said, so are, are all of you uh, going to, you know, the funeral and the, you know, to going to the funeral? And I said, well, yeah, the, you know, funeral's being held in the hospital chapel here. And he said, what about going to the cemetery? And I said, well, we can't all go, so I'll stay and somebody else will probably stay. But I said, well, we can't all go. And he says, no, Jim, he says, you guys all go. I said, he says, we'll take care of it for you. And of course now, not because of that conversation, but the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department supplied, I think six motorcycle officers, maybe it was four. For the from the hospital to the cemetery, and uh, but what and they didn't charge for you know like uh, off duty you know uh, Eugene arranged for three Kansas City Missouri police officers to be there you know one was parked at the Wabash you know with a patrol car at the Wabash parking lot where John had been you know shot. One, one Kansas City, Missouri police officer was parked in front of the hospital at the circular drive. And one Kansas City, Missouri police officer was parked over with a patrol car, you know, at the emergency room entrance. And we, you know, we left and we came back, you know, we thanked them and then they left. Stuff like the stuff like that. Um, So, uh, anyway, I blogged about Eugene and, oh, I got an email from, uh, his daughter and she said that, you know, and this is right at, you know, you know, very quickly after the, uh, the, his death and his obituary being posted and everything. She said that uh, she did a search, she had done a search and she found the, uh, what I had written on my blog and she said, you know, thank you so much and for what you said about my father and, and uh, she said, you know, she said, I read it and she said, I cried and she said, uh, I showed it to my sister and, you know, she was moved by it and she said, uh, we're not going to show it to mom, you know, yet. We'll wait, you know, she, her mother was, you know, really broken up, but they would wait, and then they wanted to show it to her, too. Uh, the other thing that I remember is, anyway, you know, I had a uh, computer bulletin board system, one of the first, one of the first, uh, in the world and one of the first in Kansas City actually number three I think and I and I did I ran it forever up until the World Wide Web was invented then I moved it here to the World Wide Web uh but I had computers, from, I was one of the first people to have a personal computer. And I owned a bunch of them. I've done a video on that, all the different models that I, you know, uh, Commodore 64, uh, uh, SX, Commodore SX 64, Radio Shack Model 1, Radio Shack Model 2, uh, Oh, just anyway, tons of them. Um, so, 
And then I had one of the first webcams. There wasn't a USB. There was no USB invented. I'm not even sure whether PC's been invented then. Anyway, it hooked up to your printer port, RS-232 port, the parallel port that your printer would hook up to, and it was black and white. So I had one of those, and then finally color came out. And of course, the quality, in fact, you might get a little bit of it, just get a little bit of the idea of what by looking at some of my videos on here of 2005 when uh, YouTube was invented. Uh, but so I had, and I had a bunch of, I still do. I mean, I'm mean, not the same stuff, but I'm always collecting. I, I shouldn't be spending the money, but I've got all kinds of. I have five or six tripods. I have seven or eight microphones at least. I have USB cameras. I must have four or five. I've given a bunch of those, you know, my different kids and stuff like that. You know. So anyway, I uh, had a bunch of stuff like that. And then back in the small town that I lived in there was and a lot of those were because of me people started computer bulletin board systems because of mine I mean years later I'd run into some of these people who ended up going into high-tech jobs or whatever and they'd say oh well you know and I was in grade school or high school and I got my I got a I got a modem, you know, and you were the first one I, and you talked to me and you gave me advice and all that, and that's why I've got this, you know. So, but anyway, uh, a Kansas City, Missouri police officer had a bulletin board system. Uh, in the little town I lived in, a police sergeant there had a computer bulletin, you know, because of me. I mean, I didn't actually communicate with him, and, but uh, the police, a police dispatcher had one and, uh, you know, at this, because it was getting later and later, you know, and in the beginning, I was one of the few people that had one, but before long it spread <laughs> and everybody had them. Um, but anyway, there was this, just a guy, uh, in the town and he would log into my bulletin board system and he logged in, he left a message or something and said he was disabled and, you know, he didn't have much money and he wanted to get a camera, you know, he, uh, at that point they were USB cameras and, and, uh, he wanted one and could I recommend an inexpensive one or whatever? And I said, whatever his name was, I said, I got one you can have. It's black and white, but you can have it if you want it. And uh, he said, oh, well, fantastic. I mean, and I said, sure, you can have it. And I said, is there anything else you need or whatever? And I think he said, well, do you have uh, such and such a software program or whatever or something? Now, maybe that was later on. Anyway, he, uh, I said, he said, well, I'm handicapped and I can't get over there right. And, and I said, I can bring it over to you. So I took it over to him, gave it to him, went back home. Um, you know, months went by. He still checked in occasionally. You know, I'd see him in the user log or whatever that he checked in to. This is before the World Wide Web. Uh, I'd see that he'd checked in to, you know, on the caller list or whatever. And uh, so then he sends me an email and, okay, that was it. By then I was, I don't forget, I forget if I was using OS2 or I wasn't using MS-DOS then. I'd moved on to something, I forget, something else. And he said, do you happen to have, he says, I'm still using MS-DOS or whatever. 
do you happen to have such and such a file? And I said, yeah, I've got a whole bunch of those old software programs here and stuff. And he said, uh, I need I, I need that. Can I get it? I said, sure. And I said, do uh, you want me to bring it over? And he said, no, it's okay. He says, you know, I can be over there in a few, you know, a few minutes or something. And I said, okay. So he pulled over, you know, in front of the place and uh, came in. And I sat down and I'm not a drinking man, so I didn't offer him a drink. Maybe I offered him a Coke or something. He sits down and I gave him the, the uh, I don't even think, I think this is, I don't think they were 3.5. I think they was like five and a half floppy or whatever. I think gave that to him, you know. And he says, uh, he says, well, I guess you heard about me being arrested or whatever. And I said, no. And he said, what well, was in the, the paper, local paper was weekly, you know. And I usually check, you know, checked it, you know, glanced through it or something. But um, he said, I, I got, yeah, I got arrested. He said it was in there. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, what happened? And he said, oh, I was arrested for possession of child porn. And I was like, uh, what? And he says, yeah, he says, I'll tell you what happened. He says, uh, I, I use a laptop computer and the thing wouldn't latch, something it wouldn't latch or something, the lid wouldn't latch or something like that. And he said, so I took it out to, we were in a small town. He took it out to, over into Kansas to, uh, you know, not to Kansas City, but he took it, which that's not suspicious. I mean, because you go down the highway and you're in, he took it over in a park to a computer store to get the, no, it was the on and off switch. That was it. And uh, he says, yeah, and he says, I, I left it there to be repaired. And the repair man put child porn on my computer. And then they uh, called the police and I guess the Overland Park police came and then, you know, I don't know where they arrested, but then the local police there got, you know, and anyway, so I'm like, uh, well, right away I'm thinking, he's parked in front of my house. I, you know, I know you're innocent, you know, until proven guilty, but I was thinking, and, uh, I was thinking, I, I don't want, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want him parked in front of my place. I'm thinking, uh, let's end this conversation and get him to go back home. But anyway, he tells me, you know, yeah, the, uh, the, the repair guy put porn on, and I said, uh, did you have some type of a problem with this, you know? No, no. I said, you, you didn't know this guy? No, no. And I said, and you're saying he put porn on your computer? Yeah. I said, that, that doesn't really make, make sense. And he said, yeah, that's what happened. And I said, uh, well, I said, are you sure that somebody, that you didn't accidentally download, I didn't, you know, that you didn't accidentally download, you know, you go someplace and something pops up and then it's on your computer, you know, it's in your, no, 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 no. I said, is there somebody else that is there, lives there with you who could, no, no. I said, well, I mean, what, what time do you go to bed? You know, 10 o'clock at night, your computer's there. Could somebody, no, no, couldn't happen. Couldn't happen. The, the, the repairman put it on there. And, uh, I said, I forget, I forget, you know, this is back in the, back in the eighties, I think. Anyway, I, uh, I said, it just, I said, when you go to court, you're going to say that this person, you know, yeah. And I said, I, I, you know, I'm sure you, you probably have a lawyer and I don't remember he had a lawyer or not, but I said, 
I said, it just does not make sense. I said, I know you wouldn't do something. No, 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 I wouldn't do anything like that. I said, oh, I, I think you should, you know. But anyway, at the same time, I was thinking, I was also, I was saying these things, but I was thinking, let, you know, leave, 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 you know. This guy wasn't a friend, but I mean, even if it was a friend, I'd be like, you know, leave, get your car out of, you know, in front of my place. And uh, so what else did he, well, anyway, he said, yeah, he said, I took it out to this computer store. All the guy should have done is fix the on and off switch, but he he had to go look at my hard drive. He didn't, well, he didn't have to, you know, why would he go look at my, you know, hard drive? And I, said, I don't know. And uh, he says, and he put the, you know, and I forget, he just, I put he put this child porn on there and he says he somehow he knew I guess I don't know he said he went to his boss and said you know at this at the computer store there's child porn on here and the boss told him and the you know the guy the tech said uh, we need to call the police and uh, the boss said fix the on and off switch give the computer back to him we shouldn't be looking at the hard drive. Give the computer back to him. And anyway, the tech went and called the police. And he told me, he's, you know, like, and he got fired for that, you know. So, uh, anyway, I'm, uh, you know, get out of here, please. Um, so, you know, he left. And I, I don't know what happened after that. I didn't, I kind of stopped looking through, I think, the local paper or whatever. I should have been, I should have kept looking through the, I should have been always looking through it because if something like, you know. Um, anyway, I blogged about this for some reason, years and years later. And a guy leaves a comment on my blog. Uh, or did he send me an email? Can't remember which. I think he left a comment. Well, I think he also sent me an email. Yeah, because I think I, he sent me an email and says, I was, he says, I, I read your blog entry. I was the tech at such and such a shop in Overland Park, Kansas. And he says, yeah, he says, the computer came in and he says, I checked it and there was child porn on the thing, I went to my boss and said, we need to call the police. And the uh, boss said, no, just fix it and give it back to him or, you know, charge him and give it back to him or whatever. Do not call the police. He says, I called the police. He said, the police showed up, asked me questions. You know, I gave the information, signed a report, all that type of stuff. And he said, then my boss fired me. And uh, so I think he gave me a couple. Then I think he said a few things in there that things that I did not know or whatever. But anyway, that shows you. Oh, I don't think he'd have that kind of stuff happen on face. I don't, you know, or twit, Twitter or whatever. But with blogging, that was a community and, and people searched and found found stuff I don't know I don't like Facebook but uh, so I don't know what the outcome of the uh, you know the situation was but I've had I had those kind of things happen but um, what I wanted to talk about was uh, questions that have asked here that I haven't I think I may have commented, but I don't think I did here. I think I did using, oh, whatever it is. And I think it was happening because it was tied into my, my uh, written blog, WordPress blog. And it's uh, like CNN and others have gone to, uh, I forget what it's called, where they do where you can leave comments, but they're, you're registered and they, uh, 
have a little bit of information about you. So it's not like it's the you're an anonymous person so much the way because those things are worthless. And I also was signed up for that. So all the stuff that I posted ended up on my blog in the side box and stuff like something like that. Can't been so long now. Um, but and what was it? Oh, can't remember the thing I was going to tell you about. Oh, I but that was not here. I didn't comment with this one, but I commented about the Kennedy back east, I'm not sure if it was in Massachusetts or New York or wherever, but who uh, I did I did do a comment, long, long comment on that. And he, his wife had a baby and the baby was in the maternity unit and uh, the hospitals have a very good security for babies in the maternity unit. And I'm not going to talk about what security they have, you know. I mean, it's not top secret or anything, but I'm just not going to talk about it. But they had security uh, devices and scanners and that type of stuff in the hospital. And uh, his wife's, you know, there. And he just goes into the maternity, you know, unit. And uh, probably, I think he went into the room where all the babies were in the bassinets or whatever. And I'm not sure if they have a procedure that everybody, especially, you know, somebody just walking in off the street, uh, I think probably would should have had a gown on and, and a mask on. Actually, it shouldn't have been in there. Should have been like if you're a father or a family member or whatever, we'll bring the baby to your, you know, uh, you just can't say wife anymore, you know, to the room, you know. Uh, but anyway, apparently, I'm not sure exactly if he went into the room and picked the baby up out of the, and took it outside the hospital. Or if he went into where the bassinets were, and I guess he, well, of course, they have a name tag on there on the, you know, the crib or whatever. But anyway, I don't know exactly, but then there was video of him, and he's leaving with the, uh, with the baby. He's still on the unit. He hasn't left the, the unit yet. And he's heading for the elevators. And some alarms go off. And he's at the elevator and the nurse, you know, comes up and, sir, what, you know, uh, you know, and I forget. That. Then that's where you see the video on CNN. And uh, then he says, you know, to my baby, I can, I forget, exactly. I, these are not exact quotes, you know, because I can't remember. It's been a few years back, you know, this is my baby and I can take it wherever I want to. And you're just a nurse. And who do you think you are? And I don't know if he said I'm a Kennedy or whatever, something, you know. And uh, then the supervisor and I'm not sure if it was the unit supervisor or the head nurse or whatever uh, shows up and is standing in front of him you know keeping him from getting on the elevator and he's pushing her that's assault you know he's pushing her and he roughs he roughs her up or whatever and gets on the elevator and uh, goes outside for some reason with the baby and so anyway, this made, you know, CNN new. And so and then uh, people were commenting. I think CNN stopped the commenting thing now and did go to whatever the name of that thing is, service. But anyway, uh, man, that set my, I, I was 30 years a hospital security officer and people were making comments, you know, like, well, it's his baby. So he, why can't he just take it out and just, and, and there were some people saying, well, he's a Kennedy and those people are, you know, but uh, there was an awful lot of comments like it's his baby and the nurse shouldn't have gotten it in his way. And I didn't, you know, some people, I'd have knocked the crap out of that nurse if she tried to, you know, whatever. So I, I remember, you know, commenting on that. 
and uh, later he went to, uh, anyway, the hospital dropped the charges, made the nurses drop. Of course, he actually couldn't make, you know, I mean, but uh, made the nurses drop the charges of assault, battery, and uh, that type of stuff, and then uh, whatever, you know, the hospital could sure drop any charges of, uh, I don't know what, you know, it wouldn't be trespass, but, you know, they, they dropped their charges, and they insisted that the nurses drop their charges, and I think the nurses did drop their charges, but one or both of the nurses sued, and uh, I think, anyway, the nurses lost. They went to court, and I'm not sure if it, maybe it went to court on them being shoved and whatever. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a, then a, maybe a civil thing they lost to, but anyway, they lost. And that, man, that pissed me off. Uh, but anyway, I, 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 but these, uh, these things here, um, I start reading them and this one here, I haven't even, haven't even read the whole thing. I just have seen a couple words here. Um, I'm sure I'm saying this wrong. Epiglottis, there, just right here. Uh, I was working at a small hospital, and we got a new ER doctor who was the new in charge of the ER. Well, he wasn't in charge. I had some words with this guy. Well, the time that he was there, I had some words. You know, he wasn't in charge of the emergency room. He thought he was, and I set him straight on that a few times, and administration backed me up. Uh, but he was the head ER doctor, you know, so he was in charge of the other ER doctors and a few things like that. But so anyway, he was brand new. I happened to be there uh, when he came in and introduced himself and everything. And he, anyway, then he says, you know, of course, I was in an emergency room most a lot of the time and I was there and he said to the nurses, you know, I, you know, we're all a team, we're all working together, and I want all of us involved in everything. I even want, you know, Jim, the security officer, involved, and we, and, and we're all going to be learning together, we're all going to be, you know, supporting each other, and when, and on, he's going on about all this stuff, and I thought, fantastic, this is the way it should, you know, this is the way it should be, and, uh, so then he goes to his doctor's room there. They had a room where they could sleep. Or there was a desk in there too, but you know, if there was no patients, they could sleep. And uh, he went there and I said to the Virginia, the ER nurse, one of the two ER nurses, I said, I'm not sure if she said something first that she didn't like him or anyway, anyway or maybe, but anyway, I said, you know, I, I uh, she says, he's, I, she says, I've been a nurse, Jim, a long time, and he's a fake and a phony and blah, 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 blah. And I said, I disagree. I think this thing of everybody working together, everybody knowing what they need to do, everybody. I, th I that's, you know, and he said it was going to be a learning situation, you know, for us all. And she said, Jim, he's a, you know, I forget exactly what, you know, he's a phony. And I said, well, I disagree. So the next day I come in and uh, I guess just before I left, a infant had been in the emergency room and was transmitted or was sent in to Children's Mercy Hospital. And so the baby was gone, the family was gone, and uh, two nurses were there. I think that they maybe were just getting ready to get off duty. I don't think it was Virginia. Anyway, two nurses were there. Sometimes they give too much detail or whatever. 
I'm sorry, the way I'm running this, I can't enlarge my picture with this the way it's set up now, but you don't see the garbage around it because it's embedded. Um, so anyway, I guess the nurses were saying to the doctor, uh, this head ER doctor, uh, doctor, uh, you know, the, the baby had epicolatus. I'm sure that's wrong. Um, and you probed in there and they said, uh, I, I don't think you're supposed to probe when an infant or a child has that. You're just supposed to get them to a higher level of, you know, care where they could be intubated if, because what can happen is you just put a probe in there or you touch or whatever and it can just shut down and then you have a kid that's not breathing. I guess it's whatever's in there. I took it, I became an EMT but I, and I think we might have covered something like that but I guess there's a flap or it's, I guess what it does is, thank goodness, is when you're eating it opens up and lets the food go to the stomach or whatever and when you're breathing or something it, you know, it lets you breathe or something like that. But you're not supposed to, if, if it gets an inf infection or whatever, and you probe, anyway, the nurses said, you're not, you know, and he says, uh, it doesn't know, that doesn't matter, don't pay any, don't pay any attention to that. And the nurses said, but doctor, it's, no, no, that doesn't, no. So the nurse went over and just flipped open, they have a rack there with medical books on it, flipped it open and then read it, you know, Contraindicated to probe, but it can close down, shut down, whatever. Call and uh, they're wrong. And then I was like, oh, what? because even I mean, I was like, oh, whoa, wait a minute. You know? And of course, I didn't say anything. And of course, I did say things to this doctor later on about not about a medical thing. Well, sometimes about a medical thing. Maybe I need to get into that. Um, well, no, I'm just trying to show how smart I am, right? No, no, it's not it. But, uh, so then I was like, what, you know? And then I think those nurses went off duty and then they, and then Virginia or whatever, and whichever nurse was working with her that night came on duty and then they found out, well, I'm not sure they did, but I'm thinking, okay, well, Doctor, I almost said his name, and I don't want to. Um, but, so anyway, the next day, remember the two nurses had just told the doctor, doctor, look, it's in this book, and he says, pay no attention to that, you know, that doesn't, that's wrong. So the next day I come in, and he had just made up a test for all the nurses with some questions. By the way, you know, I found out later, though, that he was the, his thing at another hospital that he worked at full time. And uh, he was medical education director or whatever for the hospital. He set up the seminars and things for the doctors, and I don't know what all he did, but at another hospital, a big hospital, because this was a small hospital. But uh, I come in the next day, and he has prepared a test, and the two day shift nurses, the ones who told him, doctor, you know, and he had made up, I don't know, 12 questions or something like that on the test, you know, and listed the, uh, I think it was, I don't think they had to, I think it was just pick, you know, one of the four or five things. And he had a, the thing on there, something like, you know, if a child has, an infant or whatever has epiglottis, uh, is it okay to probe or whatever? And the nurses put, no, you know, it is not. And then he, 
went over their test and he checked that as being wrong. And then I knew this, this guy is a fucking asshole and this guy is stupid. And so when Virginia came on, he had, they had a test laid out for them too, you know. And uh, I said, Virginia, yeah. I said, I should have known you've been a nurse for a long time. And, you know, I, I disagreed with you about, I almost said his name again, Dr. So-and-so. And I said, you're right. She, she said, yep, Jim, I've been a long nurse a long time and I've seen, you know, doctors like that before or whatever. Uh, should I go into... No. There was just times that I, you know, I had to tell him, you know, a, a couple times. Uh, you don't run this emergency room, you know. You're not, there's no place, you know, there's hospital administrator, assistant administrators, you know, nursing supervisors, you know, nurses, and no place in the chain of command. There's no place there. You're not, you're not there. And, uh, you know, you, we contract, the hospital contracts for you. And yes, here in the emergency room, you're the doctor who, you know, checks the patients and you make sure you you write the orders for what the nurses are supposed to do and you write the prescriptions that they need and all that type of stuff. And I said, but if a hospital decides that they're going to paint this emergency room a different color, yes, should they come to you and, and, and say, doctor, what do you think, you know? And they should ask you for your opinion. And, you know, maybe you would say, uh, what color are you going to paint it? And they'd say red. And you'd say, uh, no, red has an effect on people that would be negative or whatever. And then they'd say, well, what about, what do you think? And you might say blue or green or something. They might say that's a good, you know. But you would have no right to tell the hospital, I want, you know, a certain color or this or that and uh, blah, 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 you know. And, uh, and uh, anyway, I... And then there was uh, a, a time that he gave permission to an employee to park in the emergency. We had room for four cars in the uh, ER air garage area where you pull in. And he gave permission for a a person to park in that when she got called in or whatever. There's more to it than that because actually I was in favor of when it was a blizzard or a car was iced up or whatever. But there was two of us at work, two security officers, another myself and another security officer. And uh, I had let her, you know, when she had, because she would come in sometimes, she, she was at home, she'd have to scrape ice off her car and she would come in and if she parked out in our parking lot and went and took an x-ray, maybe take 30 minutes or, you know, an hour. And then she wants to go back to, and she had to scrape ice off, you know. So it came up that, I forget how it came up, but the other, you know, the other security officer, I tried to come up with a thing. Okay, this is a problem. She's insisting that she can park in there whenever she wants to, you know, great great weather and what she did was there was uh, two ambulances or something or there was an ambulance and a couple of police cars or something and she pulled in well there wasn't room for her to pull in there was a police car in front of her and she pulled in and she was just it was there was no it wasn't bad weather or anything she pulled in and she she was mad because the police car was there and she pulled up and she bumped at the police car and a police officer came over and was all upset with her. And so anyway, I got with the other security officer and I said, okay, this is a situation, you know. And he was already aware because she was, he, you know, she was telling him that she should be able to park there and the police shouldn't and all, you know. 
And I said, okay, let's, you know, let's get together and you and I, we have to agree on what we're going to do. And I said, what I'm, what I'm saying is that if it's bad weather and there are no cars in there, you know, or an ambulance or whatever, that she can pull in there. And I said, and he said, and I forget what his thing was. And I said, okay, okay, you know. His name was Jim too. Okay, Jim, let's let's decide on this. If there is, you know, two vehicles, can't you, you know, whatever. And we couldn't agree with each other. And I said, okay, then the only choice is she can't park in there, period. That's it. And so anyway, I come into, uh, I come into work and I, I was informed that the x-ray tech, that she was really angry and that, uh, over the parking, I thought, you know, if Jim and I could just agree, we could have just agreed, but he refused. I forget exactly what, you know, what the, he just wouldn't agree that something, just into something that was reasonable, you know. So anyway, I go back and I thought, well, maybe I can somehow smooth things over with her a little bit. And I go back and then she tells me, you, uh, blah, 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 you know. And she said, uh, doctor, so-and-so, the ER head doctor, he told me I can park there. And I, of course, then it was, you know, then it was like, uh, no, you can't park there. He said, I can park there. And I said, I don't care what he says. He has no authority to tell you that you can park there. You can't park there. Don't park there. Well, he's, you know, he, he, I said, I don't care. He has nothing to do with that. He's the head ER doctor. I said, I don't care. And uh, so then later in the night, you know, he came, he had to get out out of his room for a patient in the middle of the night. And then he came over. Oh, Jim, I want to talk to you. And then I, he said, you know, about so-and-so parking. He says, I gave her permission there. And I said, to park out there. And I said, you don't have the authority to give her. Well, I'm the head. I said, it doesn't, and, you know, and I laid it out to him. And uh, so the next day or whatever, he went to administration and uh, they told him, you don't have the authority. No, she can't park there. If she parks there, she will be fired. And you don't have the authority to tell anybody where they can or cannot park, you know, or something, you know. And uh, so, but, so this is, uh, this just jogged my uh, mind about that and that ER doctor. Eventually, he, eventually he came to me and said, there was something came up personnel type thing uh, having to do with a nurse. Now you get into an area there. I mean, he was the head ER doctor. He couldn't fire a nurse. He couldn't hire a nurse. He couldn't discipline a nurse. He, he could lodge a complaint or something or other. But uh, he got involved. I think that was a or was it something else? Well, yeah, I, I kind of remember now. He, well, he got involved in a nursing situation. That's kind of a gray area, you know. ER nurse, sort of a gray area, sort of. Uh, but he went and administration. Well, I, there was some other things I didn't mention, you know, about him, but. He went to administrate. He came. He said, "Oh, Jim, you know, like later in the night or whatever." Uh, Jim, he says, "I, I went to administration. Want me to come down and talk to me?" And he says, uh, "They, I forget what they told him. Something." And I said, uh, "Doctor, uh, you know, what they're trying to do is to get you out of here. If you ask my opinion." I said, I think, and I had no communications with administration at that hospital, really, you know. Um, 
I said, you know, they want you out. And he said, oh, no, this was about, and I said, no. Uh, and anyway, I don't know, a week or so, two weeks later, something like that, he was gone. You know, they, they got him out of there. Um, well, I wanted to talk about some other uh, things, but um, another story about that doctor. Since and I think I think I might end it on that. Um, he was working full time as medical director or education director at a hospital. He was, oh, that's a thing too. He was taking a, I'm not sure what you'd call it, geriatric, well, geriatrics having to do with old people. But he was, it was, I don't know if it was a fellowship or what it was. And his intention was that he was going to own a bunch of nursing homes. And so he was doing that. So he was working at a hospital as the education medical director or whatever. And he needed, he worked a night shift. Oh, that was the thing, yeah. The hospital told him that he needed to work the day shift. And he said, well, you know, he told him, I can't work the day shift and whatever. And that's when I told him, I said, no, they, they know that. And they want you out of here. That's what they're telling you, you know. And then, of course, they did, you know. But he was doing, I don't know what else he had going, I forget. But uh, he, let me just tell you some more. Oh, anyway, that's, it's interesting about the geriatrics thing. He wanted to own these nursing homes. And he had this thing, if I'm 78 years old, if I'd have gone in there, he'd have, he'd have figured, well, yeah. He, and he just figured if a certain age, and it wasn't very old, well, uh, we're not going to do a code, on, which I wouldn't. I had, I was a CPR instructor, and I didn't have anything tattooed on my chest, but when I would teach and certify in CPR, I had a uh, t-shirt that said red on it, not something, no code, you know, with a thing through it to don't do, don't do, <laughs> I'd wear that when I was teaching CPR and certifying CPR. Um, and I meant it, of course. Um, but uh, he would, I remember I was there late at night, well not real late, but it was late at night working. He was working and the ambulance called and said we're transporting in a 70 year old, you know, female uh, that uh, collapsed or whatever. And so he's working and then he, he says to the, uh, you know, like the nurse says, I'm going to check the crash, you know, goes into, I'm going to, not necessarily, you know, because she was going to check the crash cart. Even I, when I made my rounds, well, I didn't open up a crash cart. They were sealed. I made sure they were sealed and that type. And they weren't sealed until they been, you know. But anyway, even I made my rounds. And she was going to go just get, you know, I think she too was letting him know, you know, hey, we're going to have to do maybe. And uh, he says, uh, I forget what her age was, you know, maybe 70 or something. I don't know. I can't remember now. And uh, we won't be doing any procedures. She's, she's 70 years old, you know. And I thought, oh, God. Wish I could remember how old she really was. But she wasn't 100 or 90 or anything or whatever. Maybe she was 80. I don't know. But then uh, her son shows up before the ambulance. And he comes in, you know, and Dr. Anonymous uh, 
goes over oh and he says ah they're bringing my mother oh yeah they called in on the radio you know yeah and everything she's coming in and then i knew i just knew you know the er doctor starts saying well you know we won't be doing too much you know because at this age you know you don't want to you know do and i forget what he was bullshit he's putting out and uh, her son you know there's a doctor she was she was playing she plays golf she played nine or 18 holes of golf today she plays golf and everything and well oh well uh we'll, we'll see what you know but you, you know at this age you know <sighs> well to show you too i I came in six, it was 6 p.m. It had to be a Saturday or Sunday. I came in at 6 p.m. We'd had snow, you know, and uh, there was a car that was buried in, not, well, it was in that snow, in snow drift. And I came in, I went in, and uh, I said, what's with, see, that, I hated working. Well, I loved working. That was Less than half was, I could almost, I could, well, I could just about see my, where I lived from there. It was great. And I worked there 10 years and I came back, left and went away for a year. And then I came back and worked another year and then left and went to another, you know. But I came in and I hated working with, when there's no security around the clock. And in fact, I'd said in the past, I will never, ever work someplace where they don't have security around the clock. It sucks for various reasons. I could give you examples. You know I could, right? <laughs> because I've got all this crap in my head. Uh, which I wish I could... Or I don't want to... I can't afford to lose any memory cells, but I wouldn't mind losing all these to be replaced by puppy dogs and kittens and flowers or botanical gardens or... I don't know what. But... Um, I... Uh, I came into work and I said, what's with the, the ER nurses, you know, because there was no security, I could ask. What's with the car out there in the snow drift? And they said, well, Jim, a uh, man was driving his wife up to uh, it wasn't Walgreens, but let's say Walgreens drugstore to get her pick up her prescriptions. He's driving up there to pick him up and then all of a sudden she stops breathing or whatever so he comes around here and then he went into the there he went into the snow drift so he comes up here and says you know my wife's not breathing or something like that and uh, you know they go out and you know then course I guess they both didn't go out somebody has to stay you know you know they, but anyway can't remember actually anyway they went out and then uh, they told the doctor the head doctor uh, and uh, he didn't want to go out but they said you need to go you know you know you know he didn't want because it was time for him to go to his other you know Oh, it was early? Was it early in the morning? That early in the morning? Okay, I can't remember. But he needed. He wanted. He wanted to leave, and so he walked out to the car. He didn't open the door. He didn't roll the window down. He didn't whatever. He looked in, dead, and then went back into the hospital. And, um, anyway, oh, let me tell you another story about him. Same doctor. Uh, there was no patience there. The ER was quiet. I was sitting in a chair there. But I was sitting in a chair where, you know, where I could see the ER entrance or whatever. And this uh, lady comes in with a little girl. And she had a teddy bear or something and she was hugging it. 
I don't remember if she was sucking her thumb or whatever, but anyway, I saw him come in and uh, so the nurse that when I told you about Virginia, she comes over and she says, I just right in there. And uh, then they went in and uh, I turned to Virginia and I said, child, you know, child sexual assault. She said, what? And I said, you know, child sexual assault. Jim. And then she went in and I don't know what was said in there. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, that the child or the mother or somebody, you know, well, she she has a bladder infection or I don't know what was said in there that, but you know, just a very short uh, thing. And Virginia comes out and says, you're right, Jim. And then she gets the doctor. He comes out, goes in, or she tells the doctor, you know, but she didn't say Jim, but of course. She says, I think it's such and such. And uh, the doctor, you know, we all know he wanted to get out of there. He didn't want any, you know, he wanted to go back to bed, uh, whatever. He went in there, he came out, uh, right, you know, and she says, the nurse, uh, she says, doctor, you need to do something. We need to do something about that. She says, I'm going to call the hotline, you know. Uh, he said, no, don't, do not call. She said, doctor, I think we need to... Uh, call and uh, so then he's standing there and he has to write you know the, the script or do something he's standing there and I'm standing there no other no other patients and Virginia's doing whatever she you know getting ready to do I don't know get the prescription or whatever and really I was out of you know out of my uh, my zone or whatever, I said, doctor, you need, you know, whatever Virginia says, such and such. And uh, I said, you need to, uh, you know, whatever. And I forget, he said something. I, I said, you know, you getting your sleep here at night, that's not the important thing. The important thing is taking care of patients. And this is taking care of patients. And this is something should be taken care of. And he didn't, you know, uh, he didn't, he just, you know, he wanted to go back to bed and uh, he didn't, he could have, shoot, of course, I'd have gone back at him. I mean, you know, but he just, he just went to his room and the nurses were on 12 hour shifts there in the emergency room and they worked a bunch of shifts in a row and that gave them X number of, you know, of course, you could only, you know, it could only be 80 hours in a pay period, you know. And they didn't, it didn't, you know, the, so the days they had to figure it out, they could work a bunch of 12 hour shifts, which is really hard, especially in the emergency room, especially if you're a nurse. And it was hard for me really. And I worked, I was at, at Ferried, but I worked two eights and two twelves. And those, actually I worked the two twelves first and the two eights. So when I was working the eight hour shifts, oh, this is not bad. But those nurses, for those, they worked a bunch of 12s in a row, all 12s, and it was rough on them. They worked something, but anyway. Um, so the nurses worked their days. So it was like a week later or something like that. And it, the way the rotation worked out, it was Virginia and myself were working and the doctor. The head doctor just worked out that way and the phone rings and it is a local female i think she was i think she was local doctor can't remember i think so anyway it she called and uh, said on such and such a date you had this uh, little i don't know four-year-old girl or five or whatever there such and such a patient da, 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 da. 
And she said, uh, I want to know why, you know, you people didn't notify me immediately. And did you notify, you know, child, whatever they call it, on, on the, did you call the hotline? And Virginia said, no, I didn't. Uh, you know, Dr. Dar is here. You can talk to him and find out why he didn't want me to call, you know, whatever. And so, Dr. Did I say his name? Oh, no. Anyway, I'm not editing it out. I think I said his name. No, I didn't. I don't back it up. Um, uh, so, the doctor comes out and they, I don't know whether she was general, I think she was family practice. She chewed his ass out. I couldn't hear the other end of the conversation, but she ripped into him. So, so I was going to talk about, and I'll, so I'll make another video because I've, I've been doing this long enough. Been doing this for uh, over an hour. But I wanted to talk about some of the things on... Uh, I already left it, or do I have a, another? I want to talk about the worst or the most tragic or the most shocking ER thing that I saw. There'd be a bunch of them, but uh, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about some other things like that. Um, so we're going to, uh, going to bring it to an end. It's seven in the morning and I've been up all night, really. I do thank you for watching and, uh, I'm not sure. What do you think? I have my picture up in the corner here. I can't enlarge it. Well, I need to work on, you know, I, I this is better because it doesn't have the border. It's not that me clicking on the camera thing and popping it up. But when I do that, I can expand it out to the whole, but I don't really you don't need to be seeing me full screen. But anyway, let me know what you think. I think the I think the video may be in sync. That's one good thing. So I do thank you for watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up or thumbs down or whatever. And I'll be back.